This is a story about the power of fear and the usefulness of imaginary enemies. In case you hadn't noticed, Europe is in the heat of a battle about the future of democracy and Hungary is now the front line. On Hero Square in Budapest, the statues of the ancient Magyar tribal chiefs celebrate Hungary's stand against outside enemies, from Ottoman Turks to Soviet communists. Enter the latest tribal chief. The chin belongs to Viktor Orban, recently re-elected prime minister for a third time. The face is so familiar to Hungarians, they no longer need to see it. This was a famous speech about the dangers of Muslim migration, and the voice is played backwards because the artist behind this installation believes that that's where the country is heading. And here he is the right way round, on election night a few weeks ago, celebrating a so-called supermajority of two-thirds of parliamentary seats that allows him to rule unopposed. But how did he win it? With the message in this campaign ad played ad nauseam, the dual threats of Muslim migration and, yes, George Soros, the Jewish-Hungarian-born financier and philanthropist. More on him in a minute. But first, the threat of Muslims. If you have, let's say here, in this park, um, 30 Muslims mm -hmm. praying I don't want it. I don't want um, minarets here, mosques, and the muezzin, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, crying and, and um, using loudspeakers and, and um, inviting people to, uh, to pray mm -hmm. at 3.40 in the morning. No, I don't want it. Istvan Lovas is a household name here, and his is not a minority opinion. Remember this? Three years ago, at the height of the migrant crisis, when Budapest's Kaleti station was turned into a refugee camp for a few weeks, half a million migrants and refugees came here, most of them heading through on their way to Germany. So where are they now? We went in search of migrants at the border and found a fence. In fact, four fences, two of them electrified. Warning signs in Arabic, just in case. Guard towers, and the sound of emptiness. The reason people stopped coming is, of course, that the Turks did a deal with the EU two years ago, shutting down the so-called Balkan route to Western Europe. It really is a very impressive looking fence, hints of the Berlin Wall, but its purpose has changed ever since the migrants and refugees stopped coming en masse. The new purpose of this thing is psychological. It's a political prop a monument to Fortress Hungary. Near the border is the town of Hodme Zovan Zahanheli. Picturesque, sleepy, docile, with one single officially registered migrant. And yet the population lives in fear. If you don't see any migrants, why are you afraid of them? <laughs> I saw them on television, she told us, and I don't want them here. Yeah. But is she afraid of migrants in this town? Because... Mm. Yeah. We went to see the mayor here. Peter Markizai is a rare opposition voice, and he knows why his constituents voted for Fidesz and Orban in the recent election. These people are uh, not well informed, they do not see the corruption, they do not see uh, you know, what uh, is really going on. Of course, they don't necessarily care about uh, judicial systems, let's say. Uh, but now, uh, after two years, they fear migrants most, so they don't care about corruption. They don't care that they uh, are uh, living below the poverty uh, limit, let's say. Uh, they, they fear of migrants and they vote for Fidesz. The mayor took part in this recent anti-Orban demonstration in Budapest. They believe that democracy in Hungary is already in peril. The Fidesz party has captured two-thirds of the seats with less than half the votes, thanks to a change in the electoral law. It has shut down opposition newspapers, and with its supermajority, it can rewrite the constitution at will. I mean, an eternal majority in a virtual one-party state with a muzzled press in modern Europe, in the European Union in 2018, 
I'm a big uh, European fan, if you want, EU fan. So I myself, I really would like to see a much stronger Europe, uh, including protection uh, from dictators, protection from corruption. Now remember that ad and the other imaginary villain. Stop, Soros. Készült Magyarország kormánya megbít. On TV and on countless walls during the election campaign. The billionaire was born in Hungary and his Open Society Foundation has been promoting democracy here since 1984. In fact, it was his scholarship money that allowed Prime Minister Orban to study in Oxford as a young man. But now Soros is public enemy number one and his foundation is considering closing down. Soros is an easy person for them to vilify and for many Hungarians to hate. Why is that? Because he's rich, uh, partly and maybe because he's Jew, and uh, he's uh, liberal. Enemy making is a tradition in Hungary, basically. Uh, en enemy creation. So uh, he was an ideal uh, for uh, enemy care creation. George Soros. Yeah. Good guy or bad guy? I, um, I hate his guts. Is it also to do with the fact that George Soros is Jewish? Who cares? You care about it all the time. The, the goddamn Western press all the time. He's Jewish and who cares? This is a wonderful, wonderful uh, way of attacking the Hungarian government. Because when you say anti-Semitic, then everybody goes, ah! you know, this is... So you're uh, not an anti-Semite? No, no. <laughs> Hungary is going through identity politics with a vengeance. At this weekly Magyar dance on the grimier outskirts of Budapest, there isn't a tourist in sight. This is all about preserving the fragile and unique soul of Hungary in the face of outside threats, be they from NGOs, migrants or the EU. Here, but not just here. And the question increasingly haunting Europe is this. Does putting your country first have to mean putting democracy last?